Hi, welcome to techandworship.com. My name is David, and today we're going to be talking about your MIDI controller and Ableton. Specifically, we need to get this thing recognized by our program. So, after you have plugged up your MIDI controller, for instance, my Akai MPK25, automatically the computer recognizes it. Recognizes it. We're going to be loading in the drivers, it's going to do a lot of the work for us, but what about when we get to Ableton? Um, I spend a lot of time, unfortunately, not reading the directions because I don't like to do so when you know we're talking about a Christmas present. Um, I spend a lot of time sitting there, trying so hard just for the for the, the keyboard um, to be recognized by the program. Um, we want to help you guys understand how better to do that so you don't waste your time. Specifically, um, in Ableton, we are going to open up our options menu. Uh, we're going to go straight to our preferences at the bottom of our options menu and from here we find a list of preferences. Uh, a lot of options on the left side but specifically we want to talk about our MIDI sync. Um, now you see that uh, my MPK25 is recognized. Um, you guys may see a whole lot of none in every one of these columns, every one of these rows if you've never done this before. Uh, however we've done this a few times and, and I've played around with it but um, specifically your input. Um, once your drivers are in there, your input should automatically find your Akai MPK25 listed um, in the drop down menu, same as the output. Um, however, a lot of our MIDI keyboards or, or anything um, may come with some knobs that, that automatically can run some of your preferences inside of Ableton, which is an awesome, awesome feature of the, the program, the software. Um, the MPK25 is one of these, a lot of the Akai professional uh, products are. Um, so how do we do that? How do we load those preferences? Uh, how do we get the program to understand, yes, we're ready to use those features? Uh, we're going to go straight to control surface. Uh, we're talking about the surface that we have here. We want to control our digital whatever. Um, and from here, like I said, a lot of these are automatically um, uploaded and, and, and are there when you buy the software. My MPK25 listed in here, I didn't add anything. I don't own any of these other MIDI controllers, uh, so I definitely haven't loaded these on here before. Um, it's in the list, it's there for you. Hopefully yours is as well. There's a huge long list here, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some hope for you guys. Um, I'm going to choose my MPK25 and, uh, and we'll see what we have. Uh, up in the top right corner, we should be, yeah, and even, even here in my, in my rack, I've got, I've got, it's, it's noticed, okay? However, no sound. <laughs> we haven't assigned sound to our MIDI yet. How are we going to do it? I like to go to my folder that's labeled 1. I click here, and you're going to see a long list like this. Um, there are so many presets that come with the suite software, um, the, the full suite 8 and so many sounds that you're going to be able to use and they're going to help you achieve the sound you're going for, whether it's in a recording purpose or whether it's in, in a live worship setting. Um, so let's go check them out. We've got presets. Um, I have a keyboard. Let's just stick to the obvious. We're going to go for a piano sound. Instruments from within presets and to our instrument rack. Um, from here I'm going to choose piano and keys, bring it down a little bit so you guys can see it, acoustic pianos, and just a, a really obvious acoustic piano sound. I'm going to click this preset, drag it on top of my rack, and drop it right there where it says MIDI. Now you'll see that this changes and automatically it takes on the characteristics. And down here, uh, where you can drop your audio effects, you see that our acoustic piano preset is there with all the options. Um, and just so you guys, in case you guys are wondering, our control surface options, they work. We've got, uh, we see, I'm running this with my, my uh, Akai MPK25, the Detune. We've got all the options here. Uh, they get noticed, and that's really helpful when we're, when we're running live stuff. Uh, now, um, we've got our sound, but does it work? Yes. I wouldn't be very good at putting these videos out there if it didn't. Um, so, we've got our sound, we've got our controller plugged up. Let's talk just for a brief second about recording 
inside of Ableton. This is going to be a little bit apart from our um, tech in live worship uh, that we're used to, but we're going to talk about our recording purposes. Okay, so from here, we, uh, we click our recording option up here. Make sure we choose uh, right here which uh, channel we want to record from. And then from here, we're just clicking play and recording. I want to make sure you guys understand, though, that with the right click of our metronome, we've got a couple bars count in to choose from. I like the one bar count in. Uh, I don't like to record with the metronome, but um, specifically, if you want it, it's a simple click away. So, let's see what we got. And um, Ableton is playing the four bars that we just played. Um, and we've recorded. We've used Ableton as a form, a way of recording. Maybe in a way we can use it in the worship setting, maybe in a way that we can, um, I don't know, get our singer-songwriter on and, and try it out. Um, but at any rate, I hope this helped you guys out. I hope that uh, uh, we've answered some questions. We, uh, we hope that you guys use, uh, use the Ask Us section on the website. Ask the questions you have. Hopefully we can answer and we'll do our best. Um, and, and again, we guys, we guys, we really hope that this has helped you. God bless. And uh, check back for, for future videos.